So in this video we're going to be learning how to create a really simple Q&A site in Python. It doesn't have any CSS styling because I'm going to leave that for you to focus on if you want to add that yourself because what we've created here is a really simple bare bones Q&A site. So I have two questions. I got the two questions off Stack Overflow and I'll include them in the description. But if I click on one of these questions, you can see it brings us to the question with a title. Then we have the question itself and the questions are all formatted using Markdown. And then they're converted into HTML in a really safe way so that you can't include JavaScript. So here is what a question looks like. And if I scroll down, here is what an answer looks like and to post an answer you just put the answer here followed by your name and you click answer question and we can post an answer just by scrolling down to the bottom of the page and we can say hello world give our name and post an answer and you can see there is our answer there so this was all created using django and here is all of our source code the database is stored in an sql light file we've got our environment here and our actual code here, our templates, and then our static files. So the first thing I did was I created a new Django project, and we do that by saying Django admin start project, and then we give it a name. And then what I did was I created a virtual environment to store all of our Python libraries. To create a virtual environment, we type in Python 3 minus M V E N V, and then we give our environment a name. So I called it ENV. And after we've done that, we can go into our environment by typing source, our environment's name, slash bin, slash activate. And when we run that, we'll be in our environment. If you haven't installed Django before, you'll want to type in pip3 install Django, and then you'll be ready to go. In a Django project, the first place we're going to start is our models file. So our models file is how we create database tables and how we define our database's schema. So you can see we have two tables, a question and an answer. And a question has what you'd expect, a title, a question body, the date it was posted. Slug is the URL. So if we click on a question here, you can see the slug is this part of the URL here. And an answer is very similar to a question. It has no title and we have a foreign key in the answer that links the answer to the question. So after we've created our models, we want to run a migration to create our tables. So to do that, we type python3 manage.py make migrations. And the first time we run it, we're probably going to have to tell it which project to migrate from. So we're going to give it the name of our project, which in this case is QA. So if we run that command, it'll create some Python scripts for us that will allow us to create our database tables. And then we run manage.py again, and we type in migrate, and that will create all of our tables. If you download the source code from GitHub, at this point, you'll be ready to run it. All you have to do is type python3 manage.py and then run server. So the next place we need to look is our URLs file. So we've got four URLs here. The admin one is just built into Django, but we've got index, which is just our index page. And then we've got an ask question page, an answer question page, and a view question page. So to view a question, we go to this URL, which is question slash the questions ID slash its slug. So whenever we go to one of these URLs, we have to load our view. So our views file is where we put all of the logic for our question and answer site. So the index page runs the index method. We have this context, which is where we store all of the variables that we want to pass to our template. And what I did was I created a variable called questions, and it stores all of the questions from the database. That's why on the index page, we can and print out all of the questions. So what we do is we pass all of the questions to the index template. On the template, we load our static files, which allows us to load our style.css. And here what we do is we run a special for loop that will print out all of the questions. So the next page we want to look at is ask question. So this is what ask question looks like. And what we do is we render our ask question.html template, which is this page you can see here. But whenever we submit our form, what we do is we send a post request and that's when we want to run this code. So if we get a post request, Request, which means we've tried to ask a question. We try to save the question into the database, otherwise we print an error. So if I was to run this now, you can see it says something was wrong with the form. So the way we post the question is we post the title and the question itself and who it was posted by. Then we create this special question object in Django and we save it to the database. And then what we do is we redirect the user to their question so they can view it. So here is a test question. If I click ask question, you can see it added the question to the database and then it redirected us to our question. So the next thing we're going to look at is the view question page. So what we do is we load our question object and we convert it into JSON because otherwise it would look a bit messy. We add the date posted, the question ID, and for question text, what we do is we take the markdown that the user entered and we convert that into HTML. That's what markdown2.markdown does. And then what we do is we run bleach.clean. And what that does is it takes the HTML from markdown and it checks it for certain tags. So we're only going to allow these tags to be present in the HTML that we output on the page. So this way we can exclude script tags so that people can't add JavaScript into their questions. So markdown2 and bleach are external libraries that I've included up here. And to install them, all we do is we type pip3 install markdown2 and 
we do the same thing for bleach. And then what we do is we get all of the answers for that question and we go through the answers and we do the exact same thing as we did for the question. We convert the markdown code into HTML and then we run bleach.clean to make sure that it's clean HTML. Then what I do is I send all this data to the view question page. So view question is how we view our questions. And what we do is we print out our questions title and the questions text. And we have this special safe keyword which stops Django trying to escape the HTML. If I turn that off, you can see Django has escaped all of our HTML code and it's not formatting correctly. So because we've used that bleach library to make sure our HTML is safe, we can say to Django that it's safe and it doesn't need to do anything to it. Next all we do is we print out all of our answers and we have our form for answering questions. So this form uses Ajax, so we have some JavaScript code for that. And all we do is we send an Ajax post request to this Ajax answer question page with the answer and who it was posted by and the question that the answer corresponds to. And then up here we have a bit of boilerplate code, which is how we do cross-site request forgery protection in Django. This is just code that you can find anywhere on the internet. This isn't specific to this project. And finally, all we need to do is look at our Ajax answer question page. So what we do is we check for post requests. If we get a post request, we try to add the answer to the database. Otherwise, we tell the user there was an error. And this is pretty similar to the ask question code. So what we do is we take the answer and the posted by data and the question ID, we create a new answer object and we save it in the database. And that's pretty much it. So there are obviously some things missing from this project, like voting for questions and voting for answers to prioritize them. But those are the things we can add in a later video. So all of the source code will be on GitHub, so you can download it. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Don't forget to check out the newhighcode.org. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.